After a good night's rest, comfortable tour buses will take us to our visit in Posh, Hungary. It is a short distance from our docking in Mohach. The four towers of the Basilica of Posh dominate the view over this city in the southwest corner of Hungary. Dedicated to St. Peter, the Basilica sits atop a small hill near the city's center area. The Basilica is surrounded by lovely park areas and stone walkways meander down the hillside towards the city center. When the Ottomans invaded, many Hungarian churches were converted to mosques. The Gaza Kazim Mosque was built in the 16th century, but it was reclaimed when the Turks were ousted and is now known as the Mosque Church. Its official name, the Inner Town Parish Church, doesn't seem to give credit to the architectural mixture of religions and cultures found here. A number of streets converge below the Mosque Church. Brightly tiled rooftops give the city a Mediterranean atmosphere. Architectural styles are varied and intermingled. In 2010, Posh deservedly was given the rotating title, the cultural capital of Europe. An exciting and very visual tradition started in the city of Posh in the early 1980s. It was a sign of solidarity between many student couples trying to cope with their demanding studies and maintain their relationships. This colorful area of hanging locks symbolizes the true love of the couples. They make a love lock. They engrave their names onto a padlock or improvise one, lock it here, and throw the key away, usually into the river. The city of Posh attracts visitors who enjoy its cultural historical relics and its special style. For us, that style included an ice cream stop on a warm sunny afternoon, it was delightful to enjoy the ambiance of the pedestrian zone and people watch for a while. This area of Hungary is well known for its vineyards. Our stop in Villainy will be a chance to see a bit about this modern production facility. Stainless steel is used in lieu of oak barrels. It's the very latest in modern techniques and becoming well accepted around the world. Of course, part of our visit will include a presentation of a white and a red wine from their popular labels. Along the docking area of our ship, an impromptu craft market has developed. Who could resist a little open air shopping and a chance to see the artisans at work on their handmade items? The small Croatian river town of Vukovar is an emotional stop along our journey of discovery. Vukovar, known as the hero town after its three month siege, in 1991, was at the center of the civil war between the Serbs and Croats in this former Yugoslavia. At the mouth of the Danube and the River Vuka is the Memorial Cross, a monument to that conflict and its many victims. Carved out of stone and over 31 feet tall, it weighs four tons. The cross and the many candles and floral displays are a dramatic and somber reminder. Vukovar is the largest port city of Croatia and the city has long had a highly mixed population of different ethnicities, including large numbers of ethnic and Serbs. The 30,000 people who remain in the city live together non-violently and with hope for a better tomorrow. After the draining four-year civil war and the subsequent occupation by Serbia, the repairs are slow. The progress made still contrasts with the all-too-evident bullet, shell, and bomb damage. According to some estimates, Serbian gunners fired up to a million shells into Vukovar. 
It was the first European city virtually destroyed since World War II. In 2003, Croatia applied for membership in the European Union and additional funds are becoming available. More tourists are arriving to further help the rejuvenation of Vukovar. Still, the economy is struggling. The city market is busy and stocked with a variety of items along its narrow lanes. Food is in good supply. Fresh vegetables and flowers are there for the buyer. But money is often in short supply. An only slightly used can of WD-40 is a viable sale item. There is something here to fix about any job. It may be used, but it works. Bukovar's population has always been quite diverse. With 28 ethnic groups before the war, it had a long cultural history. The returning businesses and busy sidewalk cafes are evidence of the hope her people have for its eventual restoration as an important regional center. We are now cruising east where the Danube is the border between Hungary and Serbia. The ship's bridge is the domain of our very congenial captain. The Amadante is 360 feet long and made her debut in 2008. The ship has all the latest in technology to make the cruising easier and safer for Captain Tilstra. He explains the various features and capabilities of the ship as we enjoy the broad 180 degree view. On deck the friendly crew members help with the mandatory safety drill and a fun checkout of life jackets. It's a casual but serious business. It's a little hard to get too serious about it with the beautiful shore so invitingly close. Whether above deck or from the inside, the views are memorable. Relaxation is the order of the day, and the gift shop is open. You'll see all of this and more on an Ama Waterways River Cruise.